The scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter, 40 through 45. A leper came to him, begging on his knees, If you want to, you can cleanse me. Deeply moved, Jesus put out his hand, touched him, and said, I want to. Be clean. Then and there the leprosy was gone, his skin smooth and healthy. Jesus dismissed him with strict orders. Say nothing to anyone. Take the offering for cleansing that Moses prescribed and present yourself to the priest. This will validate your healing to the people. But as soon as the man was out of earshot, he told everyone he met what had happened, spreading the news all over town. So Jesus kept to out-of-the-way places, no longer able to move freely in and out of the city. But people found him and came from all over. Thanks be to God for his word. Would you pray with me a moment? Holy and loving God, show us how this ancient story connects with us so that we don't dismiss it as a simple miracle that someone made up to make Jesus the Christ, but instead a story of opportunity for renewal and cleansing and a deepening of our relationship with you and with one another in community. May it inspire us to draw the circle wide so that those whom we might perceive as not being good enough can always be welcome here. In the name and in the spirit of Jesus we pray and we say together, Amen. So I'm using Worship Design Studio for this sermon series called Bread, Bath, and Beyond. And it comes from, as you well know, the logo. In fact, we got a coupon yesterday, and uh, I've, I've heard about some stories of you using the concept of Bread, Bath, and Beyond as a gift of compassion so that when you find yourself disconnected from God and not aware of the messages of the sacrament that you are God's beloved, that you can give yourself 20% off of whatever crud you might be carrying. So keep using those coupons. Bread, bath, and beyond. From logo to logos. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and there wasn't anything without the Word, and the Word is love. So here's the series, and as you can see, we're closing in on the end of the series. Last week it was Beyond the Chaos, this week Beyond Hype, and next week I'm actually going to, to dovetail the conclusion of this series with the beginning of the series based on Rob Bell's book, Love Wins. So come early next week. So this was what our, our, uh, our table looked like last week. For those of you who weren't here and for those of you who are wondering if this is a shroud that's come too early for Good Friday, So the visual is intentional about helping us to be aware that beyond the hype sometimes asks us to be completely focused on what's really important, which is represented by the Christ candle. So let's talk a little bit about Jesus and hype. To begin with, you'll notice I have been preaching from Mark's gospel, and I call him Mark the Minimalist because his gospel is the shortest. And um, one of the things that Mark's gospel in particular has Jesus saying is, don't tell anybody about what I've just done for you. Keep your mouth shut would be another kinder way of saying it. 
because the, the Bible gets translated sometimes in a way that's softer than it really is. Don't say anything to anybody. And biblical scholars have called that the messianic secret. Why would Jesus continue to say, don't tell anybody? One would think if you were trying to start a new religious movement, you'd want people to go out and talk about these great things. Well, there are several possible explanations. The first is that he didn't want to be confused with just a magician or miracle worker, and there were other people at that time doing similar kinds of miracle things. He didn't want to be thrown into the group of uh, wonder workers. And he also didn't want to be identified with a common um, uh, phenomena at the time, and that's that when people who were um, charismatic leaders gathered people in the wilderness, it typically meant they were planning some kind of revolt. And Jesus didn't want to be identified. That was not his purpose. It actually did, as we know, create revolt, but that wasn't his primary purpose. And, in keeping with authenticity, since he said, don't go out into the public square and pray and make a big scene out of your faithfulness. Go in silence to pray to your Father, your Abba, who art in heaven. So I think he was just trying to stay authentic. And then, then there's also just the practical thing of it's hard to preach and teach and do your thing if you're constantly surrounded. You know, think about the... the Hollywood movie stars these days that can't go anywhere and they're wearing all kinds of stuff because they have no ability to move about with any kind of freedom. And actually one of the key pieces of this story is that Jesus says, go show yourself to the priest because then the priest will be able to confirm to your community that you are clean, which is another way of saying it's okay for you to be welcomed back into your community. And I want you to be welcomed back by that religious leader instead of calling out anything about how wonderful I am. You can begin to understand why Mark the Minimalist really is pointing at Jesus not wanting to claim himself as Messiah, and that it was as the community experienced Jesus after Easter that they began to understand him as Messiah. Now, hype affected Jesus. How does it affect us? I have a feeling that it does. If you can't see that, it says substance over hype. And we all know, well, I'm assuming we all know that sometimes things are so hyped that there's kind of a disconnect between the hype and the substance behind it. Can I get a witness on that? And I have exhibit A. My wife and I went out not to this restaurant, a restaurant which will rename unnamed based on what I'm going to say, went out to this place that was, you know, tops in Portland for having a good steak. And um, let's just say the hype was far beyond the substance. Disappointing. Have you ever been disappointed by the hype of a restaurant? Okay, how about the Michelin man? I currently have Michelin tires on my car. It was very intentional. I wanted Michelin because I had a pair that I didn't really like. And you know that everything riding on your tires with Michelin is so critical that you don't want to risk running anything else except Michelin on your car. Eh, they're tires. Not as good as the last ones I had, but weren't Michelins. Ever get hyped on a particular thing that you think is going to be great and it doesn't live up to the hype? How about the hype of movies? 
You might not be able to see this, but this little kid is saying, I can't watch any of these movies because everyone says they're good. And of course, they're not kid-friendly movies. But how many of you have had someone say, oh, you've got to go see this movie. Oh, it's, the, it's terrific. You go on, you're like, yeah, okay. I'm not quite sure why they were so excited about it, but okay. Hype plays with our expectations and our sense of satisfaction and even our serenity. We know hype. How about hype and values? So here comes true confessions days. Our boys were very active in lacrosse. And if any of you have had any kids that are involved in any kind of activity that's related to school, whether it's music or theater or sports, there's a way in which the demands of those things so that our kids can be resourced, so that they can have a full life, so that they can get into the college of their choice, so that they can... This isn't judgment. It's a reality of living in our culture right now that makes demands on families that may or may not be consistent with growing spiritual discipleship. In fact, I would say the hugest challenge of church attendance in the last 25 years is that there are so many things that are scheduled on Sundays now. And I'll give you a little secret. My sons would rather play lacrosse on Sunday morning than go to church. And I'm sure that's a huge surprise to all of you. As my wife says, I've never met a kid yet who says, oh, I can't wait to get up and go to Sunday school, although some of you have told me that. This is what Marsha McPhee says, in, in a society where hype can harm rather than help our ability to do the work that needs to be done, how can we move beyond the hype to discern faithful discipleship? Well, as I said to the children, I, I would encourage you to remember the wisdom of simplicity. And this is a quote that I absolutely love. It used to be one of our favorite UCC bumper stickers. You could get one that said, live simply so that others may simply live. And um, it wasn't until I did a little research on it that I discovered that it wasn't Jesus who said it, but it was Mahatma Gandhi who was influenced by Jesus. And um, I was also influenced because yesterday was my birthday. I had a number of lovely Facebook messages that said, have a great day. I hope you have time to enjoy yourself. One brave soul even said, you know, don't work on your sermon. It'll, it'll come together. Uh-huh. Do you do sermons every week? So I will confess that I decided for simplicity's sake, I would give myself three hours to work on my sermon yesterday because it was my birthday, and I'd stop. And if it was not done, it wouldn't be done. Can I get a witness on that? Is that all right? Well, you'll find out. <laughs> so I got a text from Jacob, our son, yesterday. And he said, happy birthday, Dad. I'm so thankful that you're my dad. I could not have asked for a more understanding or supportive father. I'm so grateful for you. I hope you have a wonderful day. And that's one of those times when you feel like it's okay. I can die now. <laughs> that's the best present. And I texted him back, kind of choked up. And I said, Jacob, that's the best present I ever could have gotten. And then, true to myself, I said, until there ever comes the day when you can afford that Porsche making S turbo. <laughs> and I asked him for permission to use this, and he said, only if you add the thing about the Porsche. <laughs> and then there was the phone. Yesterday, when her shaft is 98 years old and she's been hospitalized because of broken ribs, and guess who called me yesterday on my day to wish me a happy birthday? Come on, that's just above and beyond, isn't it? That's amazing. My mother called. 
Remember, she has trouble with memory. She said, David, I'm so sorry I missed your birthday. This was yesterday. And I said, Mom, you didn't. Today's the 23rd. And she said, it's not the 24th? I said, nope, it's Saturday. She said, oh, I thought it was Sunday. Nope, Saturday, you got it right on the day. This was a family tradition of ours. Things had to be on the day for it to be legit. <clears throat> she said, oh, I guess I got confused because I got a call that church was going to be canceled because of the bad weather. So I thought, well, it must be Sunday. So, in a weird kind of way, I could hear my mother's voice and I could hear her laughing at herself, which at this point in her life and mine, it's a very simple and wonderful gift. Doesn't need to be a lot more than that. Doesn't need any hype. And it enables me to be focused and drink up what is really true and valuable about human life. It's so easy to get sucked into hype. I am one who can have that happen. And yet, I am so profoundly grateful to God, and I hope that you will think about your life and the simplicity of those gifts that come to you, that deliver the message, you are loved, and the things that you can do for one another is as simple as just reaching out and speaking or smiling or laughing or even crying with. Because the other gift of Facebook yesterday was finding out about all the support that Sarah Bradshaw was getting from our community because she'd made this really difficult trip to Idaho where her aunt had died. And that support of the misfits, our closed Facebook page, is life transforming to hear those stories, to be able to connect across all kinds of weird distances and experiences. So my friends, even though Jesus said, don't go tell anybody about the healing, I want you to take that as an opportunity to get beyond the hype and think to yourself quietly, how is it that God has claimed me and how is it that I want to share that claim of love for others in ways that are simple and profound? And the people were heard to say, Amen.